Rossi on the break. Rossi's in the Good afternoon, it's Sports Hub right here on Super Screen Television, UHF 45, and you can get us on the Mopless Decoder or the Free to Air or on the Avo app or on any smart TV anywhere you are in the world. Yes, big talking point this afternoon is the change of name for the MPFL. I will also look at what the NFF has done. Uh, Brian Guzzo is one year on the seat and a lot of people are talking. We'll take a look at what Opera Nazi says has prompted her to quit international football and many more to come. My name is Prince Lovisa and they call me the view. Somebody asked me what happens to GDK. It is still my name. How has it been in your area? It's been raining in my own area. I don't know about yours, but it's all good for us to talk sports. Joining me this afternoon is Drop Markegu sitting right here with me. Joel, how's it? Yeah, it's so nice. Um, it's been it's been snowing in my area. If you ask me, oh, it's snowing. It's snowing. Okay. It's extremely cold. Anyway, right. but good to be here to talk sport. Um, it's a beautiful Wednesday. I'm um, very sure Nigerians are ready to hear from us. Obviously, um, what what is in the name? That's that's a big question a lot of people ask. What is in the name? Uh, the Nigeria Football Professional League decided to change its name mm -hmm. and just add Premier. Almost all over the world, it has become a synonymous trend where the Premier League is seen as the Apex League that actually portray the kind of football you play one, two, the kind of culture you want to cultivate, and three, most importantly, how people see your league. So when it's a Premier League, what is in the name? Yeah, let's start from this point. There's a change of name. It was ratified by the NFF Congress that came up in Aquaibong, and it is now Nigerian Premier Football League. Well, yes, it's not my MPFL. That was what it used to be. But at some point... And you can see right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the, 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 the name keeps changing. The name change. Takes to say we are playing the Premier League. Before you go on, before you go on, there's something very funny that came up. Okay. The short form is still MPFL. Mm -hmm. The new form is still MPFL. What is it? still MPFL. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be Nigerian Professional Football League. Yes. It is now Nigerian Premier Football League. Go on. I it's, there's I, no difference. I, I, I there's no difference. Get that note. They just a toggle of words. That's all. Okay. But for me, I, I, I've always asked the question: Do we have what it takes to say we are playing the Premier League? You start from somewhere. Yes, exactly, exactly. But now, uh, one of the things I, I, I read online was: you know, everything needs to have a feeders team, male and female. Do we have that? Few, few clubs in Nigeria have, you know, feeders team. You know, and what is the capacity of your stadium? Mm -hmm. In terms of endorsement, how many do you have? You know, capacity and all that. Your, your, you know, VIP, blah, 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 and, all, and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you have a proper security for you know people that are coming to watch games? But, but, so that's what we're talking about. I don't forget that those are demands from the league management itself mm. on clubs. So I think since we're taking a new culture, you know, I, I said one of the few things you have to look at when you say you have a Premier League is the culture of the game, the yeah. culture of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I honestly believe that um, since our game is going to be on TV, mm. they should also promote the culture of people coming to watch live games in the stadium. It's important. It's, it's, it's significant because. Um, you have teams coming from different parts of Nigeria, you know, with different facets and, and, and believe about life. But what is important is just one game, football. But um, the, the, the shortest part also, you have fans coming in from one end to meet other fans on, on one side. Yeah. But what I've always wanted is, you know, peaceful cohesiveness when game is going on. You know, they have to, I mean, the fans have to maintain peace and all that. Do we have such things? No. Compared to what we saw last season, I mean, transiting to this season, yes, it's been peaceful all the way. I must now, say. Now, that's where I'm going to ask you this question. If you look at the MPFL right here, that's their new logo. Yeah. What do you think needs to be done to attract fans to the stadium? First of all, we, um, now we, we've talked about merchandising. We've not seen that happen in a lot of our clubs in Nigeria because I want to go into the I want to go into Aimba games, donning my Aimba jersey, mm. looking so beautiful, the blue mm. and all that. Mm. But we're not seeing that happen. People keep asking questions. Where are the Aimba fans? Because everybody's putting on this. Some of you are in native attire, some are dressing corporate and all that. We are the Aimba fans. You know, I come into the team, I watch enterprising football. I can come in and say, I want to put my money in this game. Very true. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, but we don't really see that happen. But I believe with the likes of Davis Owomi, Legbele, they keep learning from that. I mean, the mistakes they make in the previous games and all now, that. Now, let me say something here. Yeah, after this show, I'm going to send this particular clip to Davis Owomi. He's a top senior man I respect so much. Mm. And we're close, and most times, he's someone who will listen. I think all clubs should take this cue. They should give credence to ticketing. If the tickets are attractive, what I mean attractive, they become a souvenir. Yeah. One. Mm -hmm. Two, something you can keep and say, my son, I went to watch this game. Exactly. This is the ticket of my club. Yes. It becomes something that mm -hmm. people want to buy. Mm -hmm. Two, they should subsidize this ticket for the first one or two years to yeah. attract people to exactly. the stadium. Yeah. Three, there should be raffle draws. 
that will enhance the fans winning the souvenirs of the teams. And just to add to that, also, you can have, like, like the coaches or the best players sign autographs for fans on jerseys. We are giving this free for charge. <laughs> Very well, we're not saying the clubs are moribund when it comes to ideas. Yeah. But you see, with the influx of so many things coming up, they might not really want to think in this direction. Mm. And one good thing, again, uh, the MPFL is doing is there's going to be live commentaries in certain stadia. That would be nice. Facilities have been installed. That would be nice. And that will bring some certain dimension, unique dimension to our league. Now, quickly away from that, and I hope that uh, the authorities are having the listening ear to understand that when these things are done, the fans will come to the stadium. Sure, That's definitely true. Sure. Because if you see what happens in the Premier League, most of the Premier League, people go to the stadium to enjoy a game. Even there are outer screens that people sit out yeah, to see those yeah. games. Mm -hmm. It's not just you sitting at home. Exactly. Good. So if the commentaries are also good, live commentaries, commentaries that are insightful, yeah. that are encouraging, that mm -hmm. are information field, the fans will definitely listen. Even yeah. if it means picking up your radio. Do you think that growing up, listening to commentaries on radio was something everybody wanted to do? The days will make out the point, the rest of them. Because my dad, that was what I saw my dad doing. He would, he, if he doesn't go to the pitch to watch Thank games, you. are you here on transit radio, you know, cheering and even supporting his team? You know why? Yeah. It was insightful. Exactly. It was hilarious. It was something you need to follow when mm. the commentator is giving a brief action on but, the pitch. But a lot of journalists felt, you know, I mean, a running commentary is eh, not that professional. No, but no, no, no. For no, me, no. It, it's no, something no. really big. It's the peak. It's the peak of any sports analyst. It's the mm. peak of any sport presenter. Like, speaking for myself, I want to end up running commentaries in games all over the world. Yeah. That is what I want to go back to, which is something I have dreamt of. And I'm getting it's, into it's it. something so very fantastic. It's fantastic. If, yeah. you, if you listen to Peter Drury, runs commentary on the EPL. He's one of the best we have in the world. Oh, talk about yeah. it. Talk yeah. about it. Yes. All right, let's see some of the games that will be coming up. The opening day matches is on Sunday, and uh, we have Bayer United taking on Aqua United. Switching Stars will take on Plateau United. Abia Warriors will be playing Nanda Tornadoes. Eimba will play Bender Insurance. This is a game everyone wants to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Rivers United will play Rainbow Stars, and that beautiful game. Uh, you also have uh, Katsuna United. Uh, playing Kuala United, Sunshine Stars will play Kanu Pillars, Heartland will play Lobby Stars, Sporting Lagos will be playing Gombe United, Rangers International will play Doma United. Before you make your comment, mm. there's something synonymous about our team. If, it, if they're not FC Stars, they are United. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. These are the games yeah. for uh, the opening weekend. Yeah, you, you know, the first game in the MPFL is always interesting, especially when you see the big names starting the, the league, aimed by FC taking on Bender Insurance. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think they're out of the CAF championship already, yes. so they, they can focus on you know the um, MPFL. And look, look, looking at the um, the, the future so far, for me, I, I, I really want to see what Ilechuku has brought to bear in Rangers. In Rangers, because we all know where Rangers. Why do you have to pick my team. No, I mean that is one team. Well, that, that's one of the respected team we have in Nigeria. Obviously, you know, true, looking at our students way back. So I really want to see what. Ile Chuku is going to do with Rangers this season because you know he brings a lot of magic when it comes to you know I mean coaching and all yeah, that yeah. and also for Lobby, Lobby Stars they got a new coach there will be there will be a way they are starting a game away against I think play to United so I'm um, I, I can't wait for the games to start start happening let's see fantastic football absolutely I agree with you with the games you're seeing right there on your screen they're all mouth watering game whatever being you are just pick up your canvas your t-shirt and make sure it is the club you're representing you're supporting and be at the stage to give what the mpfl is trying to project a new culture of football a tradition that nigerians are lovers of the game which we've always been and i can assure you that the mpfl is going to bring the very best in football organization all right before we leave the mpfl let's quickly tell you that last season um 15 million was won by mm. the club that picked up the mpfl League, yeah, and um, it was quite interesting, yeah, very interesting. And you remember, um, 10 million was given to all the team before the league started, so it's um, it's something big that's what happening. 50 million, 100 100 million. 100 no, million. I mean, like each team got yes. this amount of money, I yes. think about 10 million, yes, yeah, it's like a subvention and all that. Not talking about what they got from their state, so I, I think that smiles all the way. Now, if you, if you have to picture back some couple of years back this season, you hear player cry, not payment of salaries, mm -hmm. bonuses, we didn't hit any of that last season. Mm -hmm. That means. The, 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 the league management committee, they did something fantastic. Mm. Elegbe line is made, they did so yeah. well. Now, transiting to this team, this new season, what they're getting from GTCO and all that, something really big. So, it's going to be a big fight. Who gets away with that amount of money? All right, we'll get to so who gets away with that big amount of money. Those are the clubs right there, back in your screen. You can see that they're all getting set to cheer up come Sunday. Yes, uh, just when we were getting set to play um, Satoma and Principe, the NFF was having their Congress. 
um, that board being led by Ibrahim Guzo has been under critical review with a serious periscope. But one year, almost a year now, mm -hmm. there are issues underlying his administration that has not been addressed. And Harris Injala is saying in his right up here that um, for the whole one year Ibrahim Guzo board has led the NFF, there are underlying issues that has to do with equality that has not been addressed by the statute mm. of the NFF. Mm. Oh, well, um, whenever Harris Injala comes to the mic to talk, he speaks volume. I, I'm, I'm sure he knows exactly what he, talk, I mean, talk, he talks about. Because there's been, like, um, probably an underground check here and there. It's, 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 it's what everybody can see. Because we're talking about the future here. A lot of people still believe you still have panic, you know, and burning the coal on the needs of the NFS. They can give out instructions here and there. And we're talking about equality. Equality, when you talk about equality, you're talking about, you know, the very facet that makes up the NFS. Yeah. You know, and the, the coaching side, the players' union, and all that. So I, I think they've not really addressed that part. That's exactly where Harrison is going to, which is significant, which mm. is important. Mm. Because as we speak, I, I'm very sure um, FIFRO have not, you know, given a nod to who the players, players in Nigeria, and, yes. and, you, and we are lacking on that aspect. Exactly. The way you see other countries, South Africa, you know, Ethiopia, and all that, keen into FIFRO, because there's a certain amount of, amount of money that, that comes back to the federation. So subvention. These are the things that I think they are key that the NFL should address. Now, we have a new sports minister. He has to be part of his agenda. Uh, um, let me quickly add this. Um, the status quo, there are five major representatives in the NFL. Mm. Four is existing. It's just the player union that has not been incorporated. Mm. Now, from your own take, God, um, players' welfare is key. If yeah. the players are not well taken care of, the game suffers. Yeah. What advice do you want to give to both parties, both the FA and the players' union? It's simple. I mean, because um, when, when you take a cue from leagues abroad, especially the EPL and other other you know, league like in Italy, France and all that, you 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 try to replicate what they do because players' welfare is important. What happens after the life of a player? Now we're talking about Tijani Bangeda. I had to do a case, you know, try to like investigate myself. I went into history and all that. I found out Tijani Bangeda was, you know, he, he, he got a pension when he left football. And this man is enjoying it. Now what is the life of our players in the Premier League? We've, we've not really seen a situation where players um, you leave the Premier League, you have something to fall back on. Now, who do you complain to? Because the NFL will pay deaf ears. And but the players' union is the body that you can give your complaints and they can drive it to the NFL. Then they can, you know, take charge of exactly what's happening. So I, I think it's imperative for the NFL and the um, um, players' union, you know, to align so we can just end this for once and keep moving. Very true, very true. We're expecting them to do the very best so that there will be harmony in Nigeria football. And what Harrison has said is every party needs to be equally represented on that board. And Harrison is emphatic about it that, or else, there's still a case in court. Yep. That case I'm is still subsisting, mm -hmm. and they've not actually withdrawn it. So if there's going to be peace, everybody must have equal say exactly. on that board. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, it's a shocking news. I want to take this story before I look at what the sport minister says he wants to do with the sporting federation. He's saying that he's going to meet with the federation. Before we take this uh, minister story, one of our very top players, um, Opera Nazir says she's quitting international football. Uh, when I got this story this morning, I got very worried. Well, uh, for me, I, I, I'm not worried. You bow out when the vision is loudest, and she felt she has given her best. For me, I think she has already. The decision of hers, I probably had a team. Why would you not be worried? She's 29. So? In, in no time, she gets to 30. But probably so? she feels it's, it's time for other young players to come into the yes, team. Yes, other young players must, must understand who she is. Yeah, you can understand why she's playing for her club. Uh, no, she, no she, and the national team is a different ball game. I understand well, it's, it's a different, different ball, game. ball game, but you know, I mean, we know what happened to her some time ago with national team when she, she was said called that, back to national yeah, team. Yeah, she was it's called expected back. that she should have at least spent one whole year or two years. Mm. There are new girls in the team right now who wants to look up to certain group of players who are giving their all to honor this country, and Opera Neze is just one of them. She, she is. When I went through her statistics, she's one of the best strikers we have, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, scoring lots of goals. And you, you won't believe it. In one of the clubs she played in Guinap, in the, the Ligon, the, the female um, league in, in France, she did over 138 games. She's mm -hmm. scoring over 55 goals and all that. She's simply fantastic. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to miss her in the national team, I must say. She's 29, and I think she has a lot to give it for football. But for me, I think some of the players who are older than her should have said, I am quitting. Mm -hmm. Is it because they still want to play? Probably they're waiting for somebody to set, so, to set the pace. She, 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 <laughs> she just she set the pace. You. So Lapun is a couple of weeks. Probably uh, the, the likes of Onome, she has left the national team, but she is, is not made official yet. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to see, but we'll miss Opera Nazir, who Definitely. is one prolific striker who gives her very best when she's on assignment. And the reason she gave to her quite obvious that she wants to concentrate on her professional career, mm. which is usually the reason most of them give. But we think 
uh, she should have been there for the younger ones to learn one or two tricks from her. Yeah, as but, the case may be. No, but but at the same time, um, it's not just when you, when you retire, you don't just kiss the team goodbye. Sometimes you come around, you know, talk to the ladies, try to you know, you know, ginger them, give them this pep talk and all that. So you can really know you're not just playing football. You have to be highly disciplined. You have to represent yourself and your country very well. So congratulations, apparently, to trying to face a club. All right, congratulations. Let's move into the sport minister story. I said it earlier that immediately after the opponent is um, breaking news, we'll take the sports minister. Our federations are preparing for different competitions. Our there in Europe and in America and major other top ones and the sports minister just resumed duty John Eno says he will be having a very good look into all the Federation mm. uh, he had a brief meeting with them yesterday the sports minister senator John Eno uh, has stated that the Ministry of Sports Development will continue to play its statutory supervisory and adversary roles in all sports Federation in the country as charged them to be goal driven. Now, mm. this is the bottom line. Yeah. Go, uh, our federation goal driven. Joel, let me ask you this. It's a big one. Are we they can, goal driven? <laughs> that's a big question. We can we, we can pick out one or two, and they're no more than I, I they're no more than three or four. First of all, I think it's athletic. You know, uh, yeah, um, EFN. Then you're going to look at probably basketball. I don't want to bring in football in and all that. We know where football is in Nigeria. Then one or two. It, it's it's really a thick one to answer. I must say because. Over the years, we've seen what the inputs and all that from all the federation. And mm. for me, it's below, it's below average. It's below say. par. It's below par. It's, it's, it's something you, you can't, it's, I mean, you, you can't take it to the bank. It's, it's questionable. So it, 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 there has to be zero tolerance right now. Let's see what this means. I mean, should, you know. Can he do. said something mm. quite, quite cognizant. He says, we need to show more commitment, focus, and passion to succeed. And we don't have these three elements, these three mm. factors. Anything you do, any profession you choose, you can because we've seen some of our athletes who just go out to international competition just to participate. Yeah. And these are taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. But who do you blame? The Federation. The Federation, exactly. Because um, a lot of these adults walk up to the Federation and they tell them, look, this is what I can do. Um, what are the support I'm getting? Now, now somehow, do you know I won't blame the Federation somehow? Now, look at the, look at the ed edifice we have in Lagos. There's nothing to write home about. You're talking about Federations. A lot of athletes can't even train. I don't know if you've taken a stroll to the gymnasium in the national stadium. The gym is 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 an ISO. We don't have equipment, nothing. How do you expect athletes to train? And we have the Olympic by the corner. And you can't allow this athlete to go abroad and train. Where will where the, where the funds come from? So I think um, Senator Johnny now has a lot to do when it comes to you know trying to rebrand or repackage the federations. He's not just having a meeting with them. Okay. Let them understand that look, you don't have those elements, you can't you can't you, you can't get, you can't succeed. So a lot has to be done. Zero tolerance policy has to be, you know, be implemented. Yeah. We're really going to get things done All in right. a proper way. Uh, we're wishing everybody who is taking part in that particular George uh, he had yesterday the very best because he says the president and the secretaries of this federation will be held responsible. Let's move into something bigger. The Super Eagles have qualified. Cameroon and South Africa has completed the list of the qualifiers for the AFCON and the draws will be coming up. Lest I forget, the Nations Cup is coming up January 13, 2024, um, where everybody will focus on Africa. But for mm. you, well, the draws, the draws, the draws, um, all the qualifiers have been known, but are you expecting any big, big shock when the draws eventually comes up? What's written about um, you know, qualifiers is um, all the players that will be in the Cup of Nations. Yeah, that's all the qualified teams, right? Yes, all the qualified teams. Now, looking at all the teams, you, you, you have... You have um, like before the World Cup, we did an extra for the team. You have yes. pretenders, you have you know um, teams that are coming into you know really you know world beaters and all that. But looking at this team, I mean, what team there might, might we give Nigeria a scare? But for me, every team we give Nigeria a scare. No, I, there are two Cinderellas I'm seeing in this particular team. Okay, and I don't pray they fall into our group. Are you talking about Senegal and um, Ghana? No, Mauritania and Guinea-Bissau. What they is could be tricky? Yeah, they could be tricky. But when it gets when it gets to the big stage, exactly. these are teams that some are spoilers. I mean, now look at what you're talking about. Look, look at the things you just mentioned. Because everybody want to play. They all believe we don't have what it takes, but we do. We have. We might have players, but we don't have a team. It, it, it starts from the quality of coach you have. Who do we have as a coach? That's what we're talking about. Now, everybody, everybody's happy, feeling happy. You know, go go home all smiling that we 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 have stayed six 0 That's not what we're talking about. I don't know what you come and said the other day. Sir, uh, Yes, but not like other teams. 
<laughs> well, that as it may, but when the draws eventually comes up, we will know the group we're into yeah. mm -hmm. and the teams of the meeting. All right, that's how we we'll end up this segment. We'll be going on this quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about some Nigerian players and some very interesting area in boxing and wrestling. And we'll get to the forest. Scene. We'll be right back after this break. Just stay tuned. Something very creative. All right, I'll scroll right on camera. I was just um, praising the ingenuity of my producer uh, based on what I had seen on my montage. But that's just it. Creativity is all about the game. Uh, Joel Wakugo is still here with me. And uh, we're looking at a lot of other issues as it concerns the world of sports. And we'll be going straight all up to the referees, the men who ensure that the game in football is giving the pep up. Well, Will it surprise you to know that none of our referees are in the list of names released by CAF? It's, 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 I, I don't know what adjective to use when I saw that list. It's, it's sad. Um, because at this point, you know, over, over, over the years, we don't have a referee coming in from, I mean, from Nigeria to be part of CAF competitions, not, not even the, the Cup of Nations. Mm. It's, it's, it's an ISO. What are we going to tell the younger ones coming up that have the intention of being referees in Nigeria? What is the federation doing? Because I just said, I just said before we started the, 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 I mean the second half of the show, I said, CAF is closely monitoring our league in terms of officiating. What that means is we don't have quality when it comes to officiating. We don't have the right referees. But, but, they, but they tell you they are FIFA badge. What is the essence of being a FIFA badge referee? Why you can't officiate calf games? Just wear the badge. Oh, okay, fine. Just <laughs> FIFA badge. <laughs> it, it, it's very appalling. I, I, I must be honest. It's very appalling when you look at the pedigree we've set in African football mm -hmm. and the rate of um, impute we've given when it comes to status quo that no Nigerian referee is mm -hmm. mentioned in a cap list. I'm going to shock you. Some of the uh, countries that their referees were taken to officiate calf games yeah are just nations that some five, ten years ago mm -hmm. were like, they want to come down here to learn from us. We also saw a female in the last World Cup from one of the Northern, I mean, was it? Yeah, one of the South African countries, you know, she was in the World Cup in Qatar. It's quite massive. Um, I don't know, could it be that, you know, a lot of uh, the Federation, they're not really doing what they're supposed to do, like training our referees, sending them to courses and all that, upgrade, I mean, the, the entire scope of being a referee, officiating and everything. So I, I, I think the onion boiled on the, ref, the Federation and who is heading that referee, you know, Federation to, mm. like, you know, inject the idea of training to these referees so you can get up there for me. It's, it's, it's quite sad we don't have a referee that, you know. Let me shock you. Um, from the list of referees, listed 32 of them and um, five technical instructors, you won't believe it that, are you aware that Mauritania and Mauritius are two different countries? Yeah. They have referee. Mm -hmm. Benin Republic have referee. Chad have referee. Mm. Congo have referee. Um, um, which other country are going to be surprising me? Burundi mm -hmm. and Rwanda have yeah. referees listed. And to crown it all, Algeria and Egypt have three Officials wow. mention each. Wow. That means they are doing something that we are not doing. Now you talk about Mauritius. I remember there's a center referee called Lim King Chong. He was the he was the center yes, referee when Lim King Chong. Yeah, way back in ninety four. Yeah. 93, 94. I, I don't know if he's retired right now from Mauritius. And um, I now, like I said, what are our referees doing? We can even see mm. the way they act when games are being played. You know, probably they are not even fit, they don't have what it takes to be, you know, center referees in the game. Mm. So I think they should they should imbibe the culture of you know training abroad probably they can get you know certified because i think it's not just getting fifa badge because like you said just wear the badge and officiate really bad, yeah. i'm a fifa badge referee but you're not in, you're not in local games the calf i mean games even the super league and all that so it's it's quite appalling like you said we oh. just hope the federation is watching so they can really do something about it mm. all right we, we, we we're hoping that the fe that's the nff will also see reason to put some pep talk onto the referee's body to talk to their members so that they could live up their game. It's, it's quite important to have a better leverage on the referee status. Mm. Uh, with what we see in our league, uh, with what officiating is, it is quite appalling at times when you see a game of football and the type of decision taken by referees is just 
unfortunate. But that as it may, uh, that's a reference story. Let's move into wrestling and talk some wrestling right now, where the president of the Nigerian Wrestling Federation, Dr. Daniel Legali, has said that he's positive of good outing in the forthcoming World Wrestling Championship in Belgrade, which will come up on September 16th. 22nd. If you're talking about one of the federation has really given us something to cheer for, is the Wrestling Federation. And uh, you have a no nonsense president, Dr. Egali. You know, look at the exploit while he was active, you know, participating for, I mean, uh, representing Nigeria in the Olympics, you know, in the All African Championship and all that. They're highly disciplined. When you say you want 20 players in camp, they report in camp at the, you know, the, the, the right time. So, um, he, 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 he's, he's giving his team serious training, personally. He still has what it takes to be you know, a good wrestler, but he retired early. That's what people feel. So I, I believe he knows exactly what he's talking about because mm -hmm. with the level of preparation so far, he can put his hand in the chest and say, look, we're going to go there and pick medals. Remember, yeah. he has something like, you said to them, Oburo Dudu that's been yeah. doing so well on that um, federation. So, I mean, it's good, and I'm happy. Nigerians are really behind these people. He said something. He said uh, with the achievement recorded in, the, in wrestling in the last 10 years is targeting a medal sweep in, in Serbia, stating that no sport has done better than wrestling in Nigeria. In fact. Fact, 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 fact. Way back, we're talking about boxing, you know, um, you know, in the 100 meters and all that. But right now, wrestling has, is, is up there. You know, and now the championship coming up in Serbia. And I'm very sure we like to borrow Dudu and other athletes they will go in there and do Nigeria proud, like what they've always done, and um, get set for the Olympic come Paris 2024. Mm -hmm. All right, we wish them the very best as they proceed to uh, do us proud right here in Belgrade, in Serbia. Let's move straight to boxing, the qualifying rounds for the Olympic, that's Paris 2024 Olympic qualifier, wonderful boxers and quarterfinals in Dakar, Senegal. You know, it's all over Africa, um, it's zoned. So if you qualify from there, you automatically move into the Olympics uh, to slug it out. And Nigerians are also doing their best to pick a ticket. I think it's amateur boxing. It's yes. not really professional. No, it's amateur. Olympics is amateur boxing. Yeah, it's amateur boxing. It's, uh, so far, so good. I, I, in, the, in the last, in the last 10, you know, uh, 10 Olympics, we've, we've, we've not really gotten up to the stage where we can, you know, a medal, medal stage. I, I don't know what's happening. Probably Federation are putting their acts together because it starts from the grassroots. We have four years to plan. And we have a lot of boxers in different areas in Lagos. You know what I mean? Even the guys collecting money from, you know, bosses and all that. You could convert these guys to be better boxers if you can really nurture them and give them what it takes. A certain Mike Tyson was, this, was on the street knocking out people cold with his punch and all that. He saw, he was seen by, you know, a professional that felt, look, you can take what you're doing on the street to the ring. And he did that. I mean, look at where he is today. So, um, the Federation has to do more when it comes to, you know, scouting for boxers. We are tired of waiting for Nigerians that are in Ghana or other, I mean, diaspora to come and represent us. And it's amateur boxing. Yeah. It's not really difficult to scout these guys. So, Very true. Well, I, I wish that we, I hope we can get an active participation in the Olympics. Yes. Um, from from uh, fillers coming in, we have 41 countries participating in these qualifiers. Number of participating boxers, 235 mm -hmm. all over Africa. We also have number of weight classes, 13. So, mm -hmm. No weight is excluded. Uh, Morocco and Senegal has the maximum number of boxers, 13 boxers mm. each. Wow. But what is of great note is that uh, the number of competition days completed three is three days right away. Yep. And the total number of competition days that would, it would take is six days. Mm. Uh, numbers of bouts in the preliminaries, 131. Wow. Now, number of quarterfinal finalist boxers, 104. Number of quarterfinal nation, 26. Nigeria is also in that particular category. So we're hoping that uh, we'll pick enough ticket to be at the Olympic. I believe that. I believe that. Because uh, I, I think you have 28 going to, going to the Olympics, 28 boxers going to the Olympics. And I'm very sure we should have over like five participation in all the weight class. And, also in, and it's in the male and female category. So I, I believe we can have an active participation. Because we shouldn't just rely only on football and a few sports. Because in the Olympics, the last time we went to the Olympics, we were just for just nine events. This yeah. time we should go probably up to 15 or more. All right. We're going to see how it spans out. Let's move up straight to Europe. But this time, we're starting with Nigerian players. I'm talking about Chukweze, Awoni, and Osime. But my first story is coming from Chukweze. It says, I prefer winning the FIFA World Cup than three UEFA Champions League. Woo. Wow. Oh, well. Um. <laughs> I, just hope, I just hope this will backfire. <laughs> I, no, I don't want to believe that. Now, now the thing is this. Well, is this no, backfire to his club, right? No, on him. On him, yeah. In the club, I'm like, okay, you're not going to give, your, you're not going to give up your best. You give your best to your country because the Champions League is a club, yep. and the World Cup it has to do with your country. Yep. But but it's not a bad one. Um, that is that is the height of football. That is that is the that is the level you get to and tell yourself, look, I've I've seen it all. I've, I've seen the greatest height of football mm -hmm. being in the World Cup, even if you don't win the World Cup. But it's right there. You are part of the World Cup, part of the system. But what he said um, at this level, 
Um, why don't you just qualify first and see what happens? We're talking about winning the World Cup. <laughs> All right, we'll see how it goes. That's from Chukweze. Let's move straight to Awoni. He's been voted Player of the Month and Goal of the Month for Nottingham Forest. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Exactly. If you see what he did to Manchester United before the uh, international break, you're like, wow. You know, Singh you know, made that run from, from the midfield down and, it, and it got a beautiful goal. Awoni has lived up to expectation. Um, is getting, you know, close to being a world-class player, scoring back-to-back. -back. I mean, look at the last season, what he did for his team, making sure they got out of the relegation waters and all that. And um, I, I'm glad they have somebody like Ndidi in that team right now to give that midfield a strong bite then, get out the quality pass to Awoni. He, can do. He, has, he has a lot to give and he has goes to score. All right. Away from that, let's come to the man of the moment, Victor Osime. Uh, Osime believes that he has what it takes to be the African player of the year. If you ask Osime, he's going to tell you he's still, yeah, he, he's still playing. But journalists and a lot of people believe he has it. For me, personally, I think he has. He, I mean, winning the Scudetto and, all, you know, being the highest scorer, his achievement so far, but you have scoring back to back. Yeah, you have Osime, but we have to look at So Osime wasn't in the World Cup. Yeah, fine, Nigeria was in the World Cup, but was, how many games did um, Mani play for Bayern Munich? Less games, all right, now in Saudi Arabia. All right, the yes. big one is Osima has been nominated uh, for the Ballon d'Or, yeah. which is a very big one. Mm -hmm. Getting a nomination on its own is something quite unique. It will be in your profile, yeah. uh, just like Aziza Toshiola. Yeah. But let's look at Osima. What would that do to him? He's in that particular list. Uh, we're going to take a look at the categories of the underdog, yeah. Favorites, yeah. those not nominated in mm. that particular list. Osime is an underdog, but what would that do to him as a player? Well, um, it, it's just one thing. It's just going to make a look. Um, fine, I, I, I'm rated among the best, but I'm not yet the best. I still have to give. I have a lot to give. I think that was, the reason, that was one of the reasons Osime you know, knocked out the whole Saudi Arabia thing, because he wants to prove to the whole world he's one of the best strikers in the world, and he's getting close to that level. If he can be consistent, Scoring those goals for his team Napoli and um, open the doors for that big team to come like Real Madrid, Manchester United, Arsenal, and all that. Because a lot of people feel getting to England is the apex and all that when it comes to club football. But um, yeah, then the Champions League, a lot of people say, let's judge him in the Champions League, he can score goals. But the Champions League has started, but soon enough, it will. So, um, but, but I know that list is going to cut down, they're going to cut that list down to three. Let's just wait and see if it's part of the last three. Okay, let, 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 let's take a peripheral review of those on this particular list. There are two favorites already. Mm. You have Messi and um, Haaland. And there are contenders who could give Messi and Haaland the run. You have LeBron, Kalen mm. uh, Mbappe, and um, um, what's this guy's name now? Um, the Man City outright player. Um, okay, let's go on. But the underdogs, yeah. for Sime, um, from nowhere, can he get into that top list of the first five? Um, he can, he can. If you look at the exploits, you know, because a lot of people felt without his inclusion in Napoli, they couldn't have won that league. Yeah. Even he had other quality players around him, Zelensky and the rest of them. But for Opina, he, he did so well trying to make sure, you know, um, his team, they did well. And um, from, what, from what I'm seeing so far, from what I'm looking at, if Osime ends up to be among the last five, it's a good one for him. But what is the important is the three. It's, it's going to be cut down to three. Now, you're talking about giving Messi his run for the money. We will give Messi the run for the money. Now, which of, he, he won the World Cup. That, is, that alone is enough for him to, I mean, to get the best player of, I mean, in the world. That is what is remaining, and he has gotten it. So if Messi is giving the World Cup, I'm not surprised. If that particular thing, achieving that World Cup, is a big criteria. Three players have been excluded. For, okay, let, let, let me just stream it down to two. Mm. For the first time, Cristiano Ronaldo's name will not appear in the top list. Okay. And uh, you also have... Neymar. Neymar not appearing? Yeah. Oh, well, you, if you look at what um, their club level, what they, what they did, their inputs for the club, I, I, I think it's, it's not even up to average. We're talking about Neymar right now. Neymar didn't have a good spell at PSG yep. in the last season. So um, not having Neymar in that list is not a bad one. Um, it, it has to do well. But in Saudi Arabia, I, I don't think Neymar has anything to prove to the whole world. I think he has seen it all. He's made money. He's won series of awards, and he's one of the best we have when it comes to Brazil players and all that. In the last game, the last game for the national team he scored against Bolivia. So he's a fantastic player. But not being in that list, it's not it's okay. Yeah, I still want to stick with Neymar. Um, he had a press conference and he made a very categorical statement. He says, I don't want to say that I'm better than Pele. That is heavy. I wonder who are, who are those touting such, you know, bringing up such news. Why would you say you're better than Pele? He, he doesn't want to say that. Okay. He wants to play his own history. 
Yeah, he has to. He has to. Pele got over, over a thousand goals, and some were never recorded. You know, a lot of people felt, yeah, if I'm the, that era play with Pele, I won't win anything. I, exactly. Pele is a phenomenon, even if he's dead. He's one legend, um, you know, um, a lot of people learned from uh, the likes of Zico and the rest of them. And that was what gave birth to the Brazil we see today, because um, whether I like it or not, these Brazilians, they, they look at their old clips, a lot of their, you know, past heroes, and they, you know, take two cues from them. So, um, Neymar, well, not bad. You know, he's, um, he talks a lot. This is one of the things he, he, he you know, he keeps saying. But um, he, he's likable where he goes to. He has a lot to give for the game, for his national team. All right, let's move on. Time is not our friend. We have some couple of minutes, but we have to look at some players. Brighton has given Karu Motuma a poch as a gift for winning player of the month award. This is the first time <laughs> Brighton is doing something like that. Uh, the Japanese player. Yes. The, yeah. A, a good player, you know, uh, quality. And um, what, when I when I dig in deep, I find out what what the president said that he's one of the most highly disciplined players they have. And getting the porch, we all know what I mean. The price of porch in the market, so he might just have it shipped down to Japan when he goes on holidays. Might just you know cruising this porch. But it's a good one. Tell other players to buckle up and give your best. And Brighton has been a good team all the while. When they came in last two seasons, and look at where they are, and then you know ending of the season, I see they have a lot to give because so you're fine, even if. Other clubs like your team, Arsenal and London, are trying to like get signatures from the quality players from Brighton. But not a bad one for Motsuma. All right, to him. I'll run up this show with a story I'm excited to reserve. Very, very special to me. Uh, Collins, a very good friend, is having this optimism that the Super Eagles will win the Nations Cup. Jamil Collins. Yes, and uh, no, not Jamil Collins. Yeah. The Collins Udo. Collins, Colin Udo. Yeah. That the Super Eagles will win the World Cup. Yes. Or the Cup no, of Nations. The Cup of Nations. If we have a big coach, a better coach that um, can invite the culture of a better tax information for us in, you know, uh, going to the Cup of Nations, we can as well win that because looking at what's happening right now in terms of exports, we have the best crop of players playing in Europe, playing in various clubs, only one or two in the second division. So a lot of our players are, are very, very, you know, and the position to, yeah, it's not, it's not far from the truth, but the question is, who are we taking as a coach to the World Cup? Let me ask you personally, do you think we have what it takes to win the Nations Cup? We have what it takes in terms of quality of players individually, but as a team, we don't. And what do you think we should do? We should get a better coach that will teach us what football is all about as a collective, as a team. All right, um, if you either like it or not, a lot of views, optimism are out right in there, believing that Spyros have what it takes to win the Nations Cup. We have the players, but do we have the tactful discipline and strategy to really hold on to what it takes when the big show is down. Now, what is the big show? You get to the finals, the trophy comes back home. We saw what Stephen Keshi did with our local boys. Will the local boys be also be included in the national team? That's the big question. I don't foresee that coming, but that's the big question. Joel, before I let you go, um, we'll be having the EPL this season, um, mm -hmm. this weekend, and the way it is with the European League, qualifiers are already mm -hmm. in, and we, we know there are top scorers, and Roman Lukaku is imagined as one of those top hot notch mm. within the top scorers in Europe. Well, yeah, I mean, some, some, some couple of hours ago, they, they had a game against Estonia and they ended 5 0. I, I think, he, you know, one of the top goal scorers. And the sweetest thing that he's the captain of the team, I have to speak, because you have a De Bruyne that is injured, and Roman Lukaku is leading that team as the captain. And, um, well, the league has started. Let's say he if he can do well for Roma, because um, it, even some top clubs, as we speak, they still need him to come back to, um, to England. But it's relaxed because, because what's important is we, there are some certain transfers you make and they end up being the worst transfer that you mm. know. But you have to go with um, you, ha you have to be happy where you are so you can you know play the, give yourself and play better football. So I, I think Lukaku is comfortable where he is right now. But but do you really see um, the Belgian thing doing pretty well from the last game they had? They struggled to win against Estonia. Yes. It, 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 what, it's not, I, I don't want to say the struggle because I saw that game. They built a tent right in front of the ten yard box of the Estonians. But looking at the Estonians, come on, it's like, yeah, Nigeria and Saotome, Estonia, they're almost nowhere to be found when it comes to world football. They're just one small nation, you know, somewhere. A lot of professionals in the second division, third divisions in Europe, not compared to the Belgium team. But I tell you what, the Belgium, they struggle, like you said, somewhat, somewhat, but they don't have a standard team as we speak. We're not saying the would sell, you know, the, the um, hazard and all that. They need to do a lot before the Euro starts because it's going to be a problem for them. All right, let's look at top scorers in the Europa qualifiers. You have Romano Holjan of Switzerland, six goals. Romelu Lukaku of Belgium, six goals. Scott McAntony of Scotland. Yeah, Scotland yeah, 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 yeah. Manchester United player. Six yeah. goals. Mm -hmm. And you have Zeke Adomini, uh, five goals. 
Then you have Hurricane, five goals, and Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal, five goals. Exactly. But somebody was telling me, I, I just said, you know, like, Ronaldo is being the next World Cup. They were like, no, we don't have Ronaldo. Yes, I think. If he wants to be in the next there's nothing team. anybody can do I mean, yeah. about it. So I have what it takes. You can imagine, five goals. Though the last game, the, goals? the last game, when they won nine, he didn't play. And somebody was like, okay, the, the team can play better without the Ronaldo. I said, come on, man. Having a Ronaldo is still discipline and, you know, um, this certain drive in that team. So, uh, that list so far is good. Barry Kane should be top up. You know, in that list, <laughs> you just have five goals. <laughs> all right, that's how we will all go about the show this afternoon. It's always interesting having Joel right in here when we we'll talk sports, and we don't want to go, but time is not our friend, and we just have to go. Joel, what you go? Thanks for coming in. This always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Big thank you to every part member or every member of the group that has been uh, making this production a success every time we come on air. Aki Fabor is not excluded. And my main man right in there, Tyler Lawrence, I'm not forgetting Sam Eze, Ahmed, I did the band. And every other person within the production crew, I say a very big thank you. But the big thank you goes out to you all out there who stick you to Super Screen TV, giving us that boost to keep talking. To meet again on Friday, my name is still remember Prince Lovisa saying bye for now and have a splendid Wednesday ahead. More programs to come your way. Do stay tuned. Sergio Perez, the street fighter's done it again. Sergio Perez wins in Azerbaijan to take his sixth career victory to beat his teammate. Behind those glass hands. Oh, oh. oh he's just hurt again. And oh, that, both of them. They're trading and Ariola's getting Oh, the Ruiz is hurt again. on the brakes and leads the way into turn one. Jibbin out and Rossi head to head side by side with a whole shot. It's going to be Rossi on the brakes. Rossi's going to...